The average annual home insurance rate increased by 20% across the country from 2021 to 2023. In states like Florida, which has the highest home insurance cost in the country, the crisis is getting worse. In this video, we'll learn about the other states where home insurance costs are rising, and we're also going to hear from people who are being forced out of their homes because of home insurance costs rising. Make sure you stay until the end because we're going to learn about specific things you can do that can help you lower your home insurance costs. But first, I need you to hit that subscribe button button. If you want to get better at real estate investing, you have to follow this channel. Also, if you go to the link in the description of this video, there is a free training for those of you who want to learn what it takes to invest out of state. It was really hard to make it through this first clip without getting extremely upset. What's happening to people is simply not right. You know, we don't feel like we have much of a choice at this point, so we're just dealing with it as best as we can. This is how Francis and Jason Druding feel when it comes to home insurance options. With the cost being so much much more and with everything else going up, that's definitely not something that helps homeowners. They have citizens insurance, which was meant to be a last resort insurance option. But with many companies leaving the state and prices rising, it's become the largest insurance company in Florida. Without competition, of course, anyone can leverage higher prices and there's really not a lot you can do. Insurance rates have been going up over the last several years, but citizens insurance customers could see another spike. On Wednesday, the Citizens Property Insurance Corporation Board of Governors voted to approve a new 14% rate increase for 2025. If insurance continues to rise up, then home ownership is going to continue to be out of reach for a lot of people. A 14% increase? If your job is giving 14% increases, let me know in the comments. I don't understand how they expect people to be able to afford a ridiculous increase like that. The only one who benefits from that ridiculous increase is the company and not the customers. He's right about home ownership being out of reach for many people, especially in states like Florida, if these insurance costs keep rising. In my recent video, I spoke about build to rent communities that are popping up in Florida, and guess what? They'll be ready to rent to people who are forced out of their homes because of these crazy insurance hikes. The number of excuses made for the insurance company to increase their costs in this next clip was absolutely infuriating, I'm telling you. They don't care about homeowners. They simply want people to lose their homes. Right now, Citizens serves over 1.2 million customers, and the Insurance Information Institute says the company is taking on too much risk and should only be serving 400 to 500,000 customers. The company says implementing a 14% rate increase will help. They need to close the gap between what they charge and what the private market charges. So those rates are much closer on average, meaning consumers will have an incentive to go elsewhere and not just take citizens. The CEO of Citizens says the rate hike will help make Florida more competitive by bringing in other insurance companies. Francis Druding gets why the company is increasing rates, but wants more coverage too. You know, it's unfortunate, but I also understand that inflation has caused a whole mess of trouble and then on top of that the climate is not what it used to be as well and so we're hit with a lot of storms that that are were unexpected. Sophia Bereza considered citizens insurance before and says no matter where she looks the prices are extreme. Paying because of paying for the paradise it's of course I, I agree you we have to pay a little more but how much more? too much. It's too much. I don't care what risk the company is taking on. The fact of the matter is the customers are worse off with this 14% plus increase. To be honest, the homeowners they spoke to in that clip should not be so understanding. You watching right now, if your insurance went up 15, 20, 30% from one year to the next, would you be so understanding about the fact that it went up that much? Because I guarantee you, your job is not giving you that much of an increase to be able to absorb that extra cost. And that's a fact. There's absolutely no reason you can tell me to give someone an increase that high in this economy from one year to the next. It makes no sense to me. I really wish these companies put themselves in the shoes of their customers. Maybe then they would actually understand how much they're harming people by increasing the cost so much. In the next clip, what people are choosing to do because the insurance rates are so high is truly unbelievable. In fact, it's actually heartbreaking. The fact that seniors are choosing this route we're gonna talk about in just a moment is extremely unfortunate, but I understand. According to the Insurance Information Institute, in 2016, about 8% of Florida homeowners were self-insured, compared to now where it's closer to 
It's a gamble we found here in Southwest Florida. I've been here since 2001. That's how long that Vern Karst has lived here on Fort Myers Beach. When I first bought this house in 2001, yes, I had uh, hurricane and flood insurance and it was pretty reasonable at that time. But now? I just decided to go naked. He means without wind or hurricane insurance. I'm retired, I can't afford that. He shows us just how high the water came on his raised home during Hurricane Ian. I probably had around 80 to $100,000 in damage. His FEMA flood insurance covered most of it. He knows that he, like many here, is taking a huge risk. A lot of people don't have it, from what I know, yeah they don't. Including his state representative, Adam Botana. You're one of those who chose to self-insure. Talk mm -hmm. about why. There's no bank involved and I felt comfortable, you know, just saying I'm going to do this. I mean, what does that insurance do? I mean, you pay $50,000 a year. It covers up to 250. What's the point? He admits it's the biggest issue that lawmakers face. It's the number one issue that I get emails about every week. So the number of people in Florida who are going without insurance has doubled. The fact that a retired man cannot afford insurance and is going without it is a shame on the insurance companies. Look, I'm not even saying insurance premiums should never increase at all. What I am saying is that a 14% increase is completely inappropriate and it's not realistic to expect people to be able to pay that much more. If it increased 2%, 3% maybe, that's doable for most people. 14%, no. When it comes to seniors, many of whom are on a fixed income, how do you expect such a substantial increase to work? Even for the everyday person, the everyday middle class person, it just doesn't work. If you're a homeowner in Florida or you know someone who's a homeowner in Florida, let me know in the comments if you're having any issues with your home insurance. I would love to hear your story. The next clip takes us across the country. And in this state, insurance plans are being canceled. What they're doing to people out there is absolutely horrible. And this is right in the middle of a high wildfire danger zone. According to the state insurance commissioner, people who live here are well versed in wildfire risks and canceled fire coverage. Everybody in the Foothills communities essentially has been canceled by their primary insurance provider. John Michelini stands on the deck of his Forest Hill home surrounded by stunning views and pine trees. Our primary coverage was canceled three years ago. McElhinney was forced to buy limited last resort state fair plan coverage that just increased 20% this year. And now we're at 5431. His home is in one of the 350 California zip codes the state insurance commissioner just released on this map, targeting neighborhoods where it wants insurance companies to increase the policies they offer. That map was both long overdue uh, perhaps larger and more expansive than many of us would have expected. Carbon Balber is executive director at Consumer Watchdog and says the best way to get insurance companies back into these zip codes is to guarantee coverage for homeowners like Michelini who harden their homes in case of wildfire. This siding here um, is not wood, it's actually pressed concrete, so it's very, very low to no combustibility. Imagine coming home from work and you receive a piece of mail and the mail is from your insurance company saying, hey, we hope you've been well. Your insurance premium is going to go up by 20%. Nobody should have to ever go through that. Most people's income doesn't increase by 20% year over year if it increases at all, because as we all know, some of these jobs don't even give raises. In many cases, to get a substantial increase, you'll have to go from one job to another at a totally different company. And as we know, the job market right now isn't even that great. Now, imagine that you find out your insurance policy is canceled and you no longer have insurance. It's absolutely horrific. The guy even showed us that he hardened his home to make it safer for the natural disasters that occur in his area, and they still don't care. As a reminder, make sure you stay until the end. We're gonna talk about specific things you can do that can help lower your insurance costs. Now, you all know how I feel about our seniors. I don't believe they should ever be in a position to lose their home because of property taxes or because of insurance. Unfortunately, in this next clip, that's exactly what's happening. And I know it's gonna upset you, so I need you to brace yourself. Well, this was our forever home. And so we invested a lot of our sweat and tears into renovating it. That was 1995. Her husband, Harold, died in 2015. The home is filled with pictures of him and the ones he captured as a photographer. Brielski never imagined selling the house, but the soaring cost of homeowners insurance in Louisiana is forcing her to face a sobering financial reality. 
But the other thing that really started to hit me was living within my retirement budget. And my property uh, taxes are high, but they're frozen because of my age at this point. But my property insurance is very, very high. Between property tax and property insurance, brilski has been paying $2,500 per month to stay in this home. She says it got to a point that became unsustainable. Recently and reluctantly, she decided she had to sell. If you were to characterize what insurance and the cost of insurance is doing to you as a homeowner, how would you characterize them? It's basically making um, living in a house that I own and don't, I own outright, um, impossible for me to stay here. Um, and I'm not the only one in New Orleans experiencing that. You can drive around this neighborhood and others and see tons of for sale signs. I want you to think about something. Imagine this was your loved one who's elderly, who worked hard their entire life to have a comfortable retirement. And because insurance companies decide to hike up their insurance to such an unaffordable degree, they're forced to sell their home that they were planning to spend the rest of their days in. I guarantee you, you wouldn't be happy in that situation. And unfortunately, she's not the only one going through this. Let's take that even further. Imagine it was an elderly family member who you know, and they paid off their home and they still cannot afford it because of the insurance going up so much. This should not be happening anywhere in this country. And as you know, the majority of seniors are on a fixed income. They're not getting raises. They're not getting promotions. They're out of their working years and they're just living off of whatever they had for retirement. If you want to buy a home in Louisiana, be very careful. I'm not going to tell you not to because I know some of you watching live in the state and you plan to stay there and you want to own a home. That's all good. Just be very careful and make sure you understand to the greatest extent possible the cost that come with owning the home especially the insurance which right now is really high now you won't believe the sneaky things these insurance companies are doing to ensure that they can increase insurance premiums on people or straight up cancel them in my opinion is completely unethical and they should be ashamed other carrier sometimes there needs to be facts checked in order to make sure that that underwriting is correct. So Sean Kevlin with the Insurance Information Institute says insurers are also searching for issues like undeclared trampolines, excessive yard debris, and overhanging trees, which can increase risk of a loss. Certainly insurers are using technology and innovation to make sure that they have all the variables possible to best underwrite. Eagle View is one of the companies providing aerial images to the insurance industry but they say their drones are only used to check out damage quickly when someone makes a claim. CEO Piers Dormeyer says the technology benefits the consumer and insurer. This imagery, whether it's coming from an airplane or it's coming from a drone, is something that it's going to be part of the decision to potentially cancel a customer or raise their policies or, or potentially even lower them. Consumer advocates say if you receive one of those non-renewal letters, contact your insurance company, ask to see copies of those images, and time to correct whatever problem was identified. So you mean to tell me a photo of a roof, a grainy photo at that, is enough to get somebody's insurance policy canceled? Does that make any sense to you? I'll wait. Do you realize how much margin for error there is to make a big decision like that solely off a photograph? The fact of the matter is these companies want to look for any reason to hike up your insurance or to cancel it altogether. That's what's going on here. The reality is you're just a number. These companies don't care about you whatsoever. The man literally had dirt on his roof and his policy was canceled for dirt. Let that sink in. The man's story ended well though. Let's hear it. I don't know anyone who doesn't have dirt on their roof. That's how Solterbeck fought back, paying $500 for an independent roof inspection. He says Safeco has since reversed its decision. The company has not responded to our multiple requests for comment about their use of aerial technology. Do you think the insurance company was trying to drop you? Based on what they sent us, yes. I don't think there's any other conclusion. A new reality transforming how homeowners are monitored from above. Whether you own a home or not, you need to understand the things that you can do that can potentially decrease your insurance costs. If you're a senior and you're a homeowner or you know someone who's a senior and is a homeowner, this next part is crucially important and I need you to share this with them. 
Well, I'm here in South Lee County in the Calusa Palms neighborhood with a building inspector who's walking us through a home inspection to show us how you can save money on your insurance policy and make your home stronger against the next hurricane. If you have the money, you definitely want to go impact glass. Rob Stewart owns Coastal Home Inspections. He's conducting a wind mitigation inspection. I'm also checking for four point issues like if there's an obvious leak. It tells insurance companies how your home will hold up in a storm. There we go. And it can save you big money. I've had clients tell me that I've saved them three to 4,000 a year on larger homes. Like this 2,500 square foot home. The owner has seen his insurance rates double. Stewart checks the roof and shingles, looking for problems. I'll also be looking for the wind mitt stuff to make sure there's not any differences. Which reveals how well your roof is attached to the home. All the straps are properly nailed that they didn't miss any. And now onto a four point inspection. Checking the home's electric. Floor outlet loose on second floor near rail. Electrical service seems fine. Plumbing and HVAC. Did y'all see him on that roof? I've never been on a roof. I don't plan to ever get on a roof. I'm one of those people who's afraid of heights. Couldn't be me. Even if you don't live in Florida, I would recommend that you at least consider getting your home inspected, especially if you're in an area where there's extreme weather and things like tornadoes, hurricanes, stuff like that. You never know, it could help to lower your insurance costs. Paying a few hundred dollars for an inspection that could potentially save you thousands per year, to me, that's not like a no brainer. You let me know what you think about that in the comments. Now, compared to the last clip, it's good to see a drone actually being used for the benefit of a homeowner. Shout out to the inspector. I really thought that was interesting just watching him go through and talk about the things he's looking for. And I'm sure he got a whole lot of business after that interview. So now I'm very curious to know if the inspection even helped and if this homeowner is even going to save some money. So let's see what happened. So we took his final report to independent agent Doug Nellens with the insurance center. In this particular case, the homeowner knocked it out of the park. There's a total of seven different wind mitigation discounts available, and this homeowner qualified for all seven, which is phenomenal. Based on these inspections, how much do you think this could save the homeowner? So without the inspections, this homeowner was projecting a price point of anywhere between seven to $8,000, which is incredibly high. But with these inspections, we were able to get the price points down to $3,000 or less. I'm glad to hear that it worked out well for this particular homeowner. And one thing I want to drive home to you who are current or aspiring homeowners, always shop around. Always see if there are better deals out there. Don't just go with the first quote that you get. Always look at several and choose the one that offers what you need at the most affordable rate. Trust me, I've made the mistake of going with the first insurance policy and I regret it. I should not have done that. So I want to make sure that you can avoid that mistake that I made. So now that you know more about the home insurance crisis, I want you to learn about why 2024 is worse than a housing crash. Check out this video right here.